Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Bank Stuff. Today we are going through my August money diary. Um, I'm kind of losing the light so I'm not going to waffle, we're just going to get right on into it. So in the month of August my monthly opening budget with my rollover from the previous month was £501.33. Now August was like one of those months that my budget actually is alright but my not in budget spending was quite a lot so it feels like I've had a really expensive month but when I'm actually looking at it the budget side of things is not too bad so we'll go into that first. Experiences and services I spent £47.50 on my nails. Then in socialising I spent £99.98 across six transactions. So generally that was mainly going out for dinner other than one of them is a £10 deposit that we paid on a dinner that we're going for in November. Hopefully if second lockdown doesn't happen which I imagine it might and I don't know if we'll ever get that dinner in November so I might be getting £10 of that back but um, other than that the rest of it was spent on being out and about. Food on the go, I kind of hinted at this in my last video so August was the first month that I was kind of properly back at work. So my food on the go across the month of August there was five transactions and that was £41.15 off my budget. Now one of them was £19.15 and that was actually a takeaway that I got at night so technically only four of these were to do with me being in work but that was the part of the reason that food on the go ended up in my budget in the first place is because I realised how much money I was spending or I didn't even fully realise that I had a notion that I was spending a lot of money at work buying lunch um, and that definitely proved itself to be the case uh, earlier in the year when we were you know still at work and then it's obviously kind of dropped off in the last few months because of lockdown so it's not really been an option to be buying food on the go because I've not been out and about on the go. Slightly irritating to me that um, kind of as soon as things have started to return to normal I'd sort of fallen back into that habit and not been organised and whatever but that's the thing about doing my budget is that I write these things down now and I see them and I see it starting to add up and it was enough even before the end of the month so as much as I had five transactions the last of them was on the 20th of August and there was no more transactions after that in food on the go so I did notice it and I'm glad that I noticed it and it's definitely an area that I really want to curb my expenditure in um, and I'd, I'd kind of done that but I've slipped back into it so it's it was quite scary to see how easy it was to slip back into that and I talked about that in my last money diary as well in terms of in July when things reopened how easy it was to start spending money again even post lockdown and it didn't feel like anything and I, that's happened again and I would say just in terms of trying to live a sort of lifestyle where I am on a budget and I'm being mindful of my money I kind of hoped that doing this would um almost make it like an automatic habit to naturally be more mindful and across both July and my food on the go in August when I've been back to work it's it's kind of given me a bit of a mm, sort of moment because that's obviously not happened it, it's been so easy to slip into spending again and obviously I've not gone over my budget or anything like that so that's it's as much as it's spending, it's spending within the restrictions and the limits that I've placed on. But I'm already thinking about next year and what I want to do next year. And next year I think I want to tighten my budget even further. Um, which will give me not so much less to play with but more included within my budget if that makes sense. Obviously I've not made my mind up completely about this and this, this could change with whatever... I decide to kind of do next year because I know I'm not going to do another full no buy year but I definitely still want to be on a budget and limiting my expenditure and things like food on the go are not where I want to be spending if it's a choice between that and buying you know in terms of next year if I wanted to buy a lipstick but that had to come out of my budget do I want to spend you know 41.15 on one takeaway and then buying lunches at work or do I want a NARS lipstick or a Chanel lipstick or whatever that would give me change of that money um do you know what I mean so it, that's what I'm really trying to remind myself of but I am still having two 
make the effort to remind myself of it and I kind of hoped that would have started to happen automatically but it's not yet so that's just something I kind of thought might have happened with doing this for a year that's not happened. Having said that of course with lockdown this has not been a typical year so maybe if I hadn't had lockdown and you know I continued with those habits and continuously been making that choice of saying no I'm not spending that money rather than it just not being an option to spend that money maybe that sort of muscle of making that choice would have been strengthened by use that it's not had the opportunity to to be used and um, does that make sense so yeah just something I'd sort of noticed I made two transactions in books and spent £20.43 pence. also I just want to say last the last money diary that I put up, somebody had said like please use your library because if we don't use libraries these resources go and um, so I do just want to say I completely agree with that. I'd mentioned in my intro that the reason I was having books in my budget was because I wanted to still be buying books. Books were the one thing I was letting myself like actually buy this year freely, not on restriction but the whole point in putting it into my budget was that I know I buy a lot of books and I'm definitely guilty of buying books and then being seduced by new books that I buy before I've even read the old books and occasionally you know you do get that where you expect a book to be great and then it, it's not and you end up you know putting it in the charity shop or whatever so the whole point of me putting books into my budget and not just saying books don't count books I can buy but they don't have to come from my budget and um, the way that I did with like technology purchases and things the whole point of that was to make me think about using the library because it's something that I know that I don't use and I probably should because it is a, a super valuable community resource um, and I, as much as I say I don't use library I actually do I do a lot of work in the library I go when I'm doing my writing um, I was using the the Mitchell library in town in Glasgow to to work from um, so I do really really value libraries as a resource but obviously it's been locked down um, and I don't know how it's happening in other parts of the world but libraries were some of the first things to shut down here like council run things were some of the first to go into lockdown and they're on a phased reopening and none of the libraries that I would be able to use have reopened um, some of them are not going to reopen and that's um, you know exactly the kind of point that this person's making is if people don't use these things we will lose them and Glasgow City Council have estimated I think they've lost like 12 million pounds worth of revenue that would come in from the Glasgow City Council things which is like libraries um, but also includes like sports centres and things and basically there are some of those things that are never going to reopen because of that revenue being lost they can't afford to reopen them and um, so I did think it was worth highlighting that yes I completely agree if you know in terms of a it saves your budget but also b it saves these resources and proves that they're valuable if people are using them and um, so yeah I do actually want to be using my library more that was that was the whole point in putting books into my budget but at the moment my local library that I would use to actually buy book a to borrow books from has not reopened and the library that I use to work from has also not reopened which is a bit rubbish um, and I think we are realistically facing a second lockdown so when they're going to reopen I don't know um, but I do just want to say I do completely agree with that so just to put that out there and then I didn't spend any money on taxis so from my budget spends I spent £209.06 which left me a budget unused of £292.27 to roll over into September However, as I said, August was actually a really expensive month overall and replacements, I spent £299.95 on replacements in the month of September. On the first of the month, I spent £157, which was on a new wallet. So my cardholder thing that I was using literally fell apart, so it did have to be replaced. Um, so I got one in the Mulberry sale, so I thought £157 was not too bad in that it's a good quality one that I know I'll probably now lug around for about 10 years until it falls apart. Um, I know I could have obviously got one cheaper than that but as I said right back at my intro in terms of 
replacements. I was kind of hoping, because I wasn't taking replacements out of my budget this year, that that would encourage me to buy better so that things would last longer. So that kind of sale price was about what I was kind of happy spending and that I feel like I've got a good quality product that is going to last um, and it's a decent enough investment to make sure that that is the case but it wasn't like a huge investment. I do kind of feel like small leather goods are just so expensive if you look at the sort of designer brands that you know another couple of hundred pounds in some cases would get you a handbag in place of a purse so it's not something I really want to spend very much more than that on but I thought 157 was quite good in terms of the quality that I was getting for it. Then I also spent 22.45 and that was on replacing a pair of leggings. Again, wore my other leggings to death, probably due to lockdown, wearing them in the house quite a lot. Um, so they had a hole in them and I bought some from Thought Clothing and again that was kind of, obviously they're not the most expensive thing in the world at 22.45 and I think I did get like an initial sort of 10% off your first order or something. I think there was definitely some kind of discount involved but Thought Clothing are like an ethical clothing brand so they're made from bamboo or whatever um, and again although it's not in, in terms of investing and it's I'm not necessarily saying that they're a wonderful quality product because at the end of the day they're a pair of leggings and I, I, I don't know how do you really judge the quote they're not see-through so they are a decent quality pair of leggings but they're not like you know something you're really going to invest into getting an amazing pair of leggings um, but I was quite happy that I kind of made the effort to buy from an ethical brand rather than just buying them from, you know, my old ones were from Topshop and I didn't just replace them with Topshop ones. I did buy them from a more considered brand choice. So yeah, I thought that was still quite good. On the 10th of the month I spent £82 and that was replacing um, Advanced Night Repair. So this is actually the new one. They literally just brought this out as my old one ran out. So this is the Synchronised Multi Recovery Complex. It's gone up in price by about £4 I think. So yeah, up to £82 for that. Then on the 31st of the month I spent £38.50 and £55.50 and those were my Kiehl's Eye Recessions. So I'm so pleased to have this back in my life. Um, and the same with my Kiehl's Hydro Plump uh, Serum. So I didn't have an essence and I was trying to get by without one and I just felt like it was something I wanted to put back into my life. I said that right at the start of the year and um, so I eventually just got this one and I can tell the difference in my skin that I'm using it. I'm so so pleased to have it back and I replaced my hydrating serum with this. So this was a much more pricey replacement than my last one which was the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid Serum but again I really really do love this and it is retexturizing and I do feel like I feel the texture of my skin is better when I'm using this so to me these are both worth the investment. So it was a pretty pricey month for replacements. I replaced five things and spent £299.95. The good thing I would say as well though is and it, it was just natural that these things ran out and I replaced them when they ran out but with Kiehl's I got loads and loads of free samples when I was buying my stuff um, and when I got the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair I bought it from Look Fantastic and they had, because it was a new product there was a discount code but the discount wasn't valid on it but I got Zelen's Alpha Beta peel pads for free that are worth about £70 or something um, and I got the Estee Lauder Power Foil mask for free as well so again I didn't just buy them from Boots or whatever I kind of looked around to see if there was anywhere with discount um, and tried to figure out where I'd get the kind of best deal or the best sort of bang for my buck. Having said that I did still just do that when things had run out and needed replaced because I don't want to be constantly looking at what's on offer and using offers to justify tipping me over into buying something that I don't really need or whatever but at the same time I feel like in the past I would have just been like right I need more of this I'll just go get it. Whereas I felt like with these things I had a more considered approach to replacing them so I was quite pleased with that. I felt like that was progress in and of itself. Now I also did some self gifting this month. So my birthday was in July and I didn't buy my birthday present in July. I bought it in August and there was a pair of shoes that I thought I was going to buy and I thought they might have gone in sale. So I kept hanging off and hanging off and hanging off and they've never gone into sale. They're still full price on the website. 
um, and I might get them as my Christmas present to myself if they don't go on the Christmas sale. Uh, or I might get them as my Christmas present whether they go on sale or not, but yeah, basically they didn't go on sale. And I'd been kind of putting it off and putting it off, hoping that they would get added to the sale. Didn't happen. And then I was kind of like, oh, right, there's no rush to purchase them now because they're not on sale, they're still full price, they're still in stock, whatever. And then I got an email from the outlet and another pair of shoes that I had wanted for a very long time, which are still full price on the Dolce & Gabbana website. And they are still, they're still bringing out things in this logo design, so I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. But I think the outlet must have just had a couple of random pairs, well, Netaporte must have had a couple of random pairs left and they must have decided they're not restocking them, so they had reduced them. So I got my birthday present to myself. So another pair of Dolce Gabbana shoes, that's what I bought as my Valentine's Day gift to myself and potentially will buy as my Christmas gift to myself. Um, and these are roughly a £1,000 on the Dolce Gabbana website and I got them for 425 and I felt like fate had kind of intervened there and like making me hold off and hold off on the other shoes. So these will not be to everyone's taste, nothing with Dolce Gabbana is to everyone's taste. These are the shoes, so yeah, the heels are like the D&G, which as I say, they're still bringing out bags, belts, etc. with this kind of Baroque-inspired um, logo going on. And they're just, from the front, they're just a very plain, they're kind of lurex, they're a little bit shiny, if you can see that. Um, but ultimately still very, very plain, will kind of go with anything and then the drama's all in the heels so they're very very pleased with them so they were my birthday present to myself so that means the three gifts that I've got this year as you know from my intro were my Valentine's Day gift to myself, my birthday gift to myself and my Christmas gift to myself so that's me, I spent my Valentine's and birthday gifts so I now need to wait till December before I can buy myself anything else so yeah, gifting is, is spent and the other exception that I get is when I go on holiday, I can buy whatever I like. Again, I've discussed this and that I think I shop quite well when I'm on holiday. So I did take a little mini break in August just through to Edinburgh because obviously lockdown had kind of just lifted in July and you can now travel abroad, but you know, you could be somewhere and then it could get added to the quarantine list or whatever. So didn't go too far, just went to Edinburgh for a couple of nights, but I did say as long as I was away for two or more nights that I could treat it as a holiday and I could purchase things. So I spent £926 when I was in Edinburgh. I'm not going to go into what that was made up of because I'm going to do a separate video showing you what I bought in Edinburgh and then also just discussing why I bought what I bought, how I feel that being on my no buy affected what I bought um, and then I think I'm going to do the ranking thing again so I did that with my London haul and I, I want to do that as a separate video because when I was in Edinburgh I sort of subconsciously started ranking things as I was buying them um, which I thought was really really interesting and it actually stopped me buying a couple of things that I was looking at that I could have bought because I was on holiday and I was looking at them and I was like you know it's the right price, I like it, whatever and then I kind of had this voice in my head that was like but you've bought this and you've bought this and you know in terms of like if you were to do a ranking video with this that this item and this item would be well ahead of this thing you're currently thinking about buying and you don't like it as much as you like them so do you actually really want this or is it just that you've got the permission to buy it kind of thing um, and it stopped me buying a couple of things so I think again as much as I spent quite a lot of money I shopped overall very well so I think I'm going to do well I don't think I am going to do a separate video with my Edinburgh haul and discussing it and ranking it so I won't go into what I actually bought for that money. And then I've also decided, so that category is holiday spends in my non-budget side of things, and I've also decided to start tracking what I spend on paying for holidays as well. So I have put down a deposit of £75, so that was my last spend, um, which Lauren and I went to London between Christmas and New Year last year, and it was lovely, it just sort of extended the Christmas period. Both our offices shut over that period anyways. We are off work, have to use holidays, it's kind of nice to use them to actually do something. Obviously in terms of lockdown we don't know if we'll actually get to go um, but we have put down the deposit to hopefully go so £75 
has been spent and I've put that in holiday spends as well even though it's not spending on holiday but it's spending on paying for the holidays and I didn't actually the payments that I made towards New York at the start of the year I didn't track is within my non-budget but I think it is something that I want to track for going forward because I really like travelling and I really like holidays but I also do feel that I give myself a bit of a free pass with them and I would just like to be a little bit more aware of how much I'm spending not just when I'm on holiday but also spending to go on holiday and I think having some figures around that might kind of help me make better decisions basically so yeah I don't know if we'll actually get to go but we put down the deposit so I tracked my £75 spend in my holiday spends category so my holiday spends all in were £1,001 exactly. My non-budget spends in the month of August were £1,725.95 and um, so adding that to my budget spend of £209.06 I spent £1,935 and a penny in the month of August which so yeah you can see why that feels like an expensive month given that I have been on no buy and I've been sticking to a budget of £250 a month up till now and obviously there are months that I haven't even spent that but one of the things I would say I don't know enough about the sort of psychology of addiction but I know in terms of like AA or whatever the whole thing is that you have to then start abstaining from you know like alcohol or drugs or whatever your substance this is very much something I've only heard in terms of relation to substance substance addiction um, is that you can basically never have that thing again like one sip of alcohol one whatever will get you straight back to where you were and I do definitely think I had a shopping addiction like when I read about addiction that sort of rush and that high and then the come down that was exactly what I was going through every time I purchased something so I'm not having that emotional attachment to it that I did have um but I really want to shop again this month I don't know if that is linked to having been in holiday and having shopped in the month of August or if it's just because of the time of year because I'm ultimately not that into spring summer and um, you know I am an autumn winter kind of person I love coats I love really heavy fabrics I love dual tones um you know dark lipstick fur velvet faux fur like those are my seasons are autumn winter i am not a spring summer person i don't get excited about summer dresses sandals no doesn't bother me to not partake in that doesn't bother me whereas like boots and coats and all the fun things that come with autumn winter i am very very into um, so I don't know if I would just have that urge to be shopping anyway regardless of whether I'd been in holiday last month or not because it's just that time of year and you know all the fun things are coming into the shops and tempting me but I've noticed myself looking for stuff to buy as well which I just hadn't really been doing up till now I'm not really an online shopper it doesn't really still me in the same way that in-person shopping does and even through lockdown and things I sometimes had to browse but it never really got me kind of enthralled or tested me or anything whereas I feel like I've noticed myself in the last couple of weeks going on to ASOS, going on to Net-A-Porter, going on to The Outnet, going on to um, Zara like and just just looking at things and sort of thinking to myself if I wasn't on a no-buy what would I buy? I'm not broken by no-buy, it's, it's very much theoretical and I think like ultimately I need to get to a point where I can go to shops or I can look on websites and I can interact with things that I could possibly buy and still come out making the choice not to like you know I think I need to be able to do that because I did unsubscribe at the start of the year from most of the emails that I was getting, you know, shops that I didn't really shop in, like Topshop and River Island and whatever. Um, you know, I unsubscribed from most of them. I think I kept Net-A-Porter, My Teresa, The Outnet. I kept like the luxury ones basically that I don't ever impulse shop with kind of thing. 
um, I felt like safe to keep them. I unsubscribed from all of that because I didn't want to be tempted by it and I would say that 100% so far that's what I would say that I am not missing is all the things that I used to just buy in like H&M or Zara or whatever um, because they were never thought through purchases because they were always inexpensive enough that I didn't need to think about them even though all those inexpensive purchases were adding up to a large amount of money and even in terms of like when I was in Edinburgh like I was in H&M and Zara and that that's exactly what I was talking about is that there were things that I was nearly going to buy and I was a bit like you're just buying this because you can like you wouldn't choose this as your birthday present to yourself like you wouldn't choose this over other items that you've bought like you're just buying this for the sake of it and I caught myself doing it and that's definitely definitely what I'm not missing is the the small sort of impulse purchases but I would like to be going out and buying like a nice new coat for the winter season and some well I bought some boots in Edinburgh actually but you know what I mean like those sort of investment pieces I'm missing making those investments but I'm not missing the small things. The impulse when I was in Edinburgh was still there when I was in H&M or whatever that I was picking things up and then I was a bit like put that down you don't need it and I could talk myself out of that and that's that's ultimately what I need to be able to do um, but at the same time I don't it's, it's, it's not just that side of it it's the energy and I've spoken about this before like just in terms of the amount of time that I was dedicating to finding things to buy I don't want to be doing that and I'm, I've noticed myself just being on these websites a little bit more in the last couple of weeks and just checking new in sections and being like any new coats, any new boots, any new handbags and I just don't want to get back to the same amount of my time and mental energy being given to not only shopping in terms of the financial giving to shopping but the the finding things to want and the, the the amount of energy and time that I was taking I don't know how else to phrase it I hope that makes sense and you you see what I mean I think particularly with lockdown there there is a danger to being like we should be you know super super productive because I was not productive in lockdown I was not having a good time in lockdown I was very very stressed about my job I didn't know if I was gonna have a job at the end of lockdown in theory it sounds like such a gift and especially because I want to write like I, I kept opening my document and looking at it and just like writing a hundred words was like pulling teeth and I just hated it and it was like I went to I went to I via zoom attended the Louise O'Neill and Marianne Keyes book event that Waterstones ran um, for the launch of Louise O'Neill's new book After the Silence and they were both talking about like the difficulties they'd had as professional writers writing during lockdown which was very very heartening but, but yeah it's this like emphasis and productivity that I think can be damaging because I definitely just went into this spiral of being like why can't I write I've got this time now and why am I not able to do this what's wrong with me kind of thing and that did a lot more damage I think than it did any kind of geeing up of myself to want to write. I don't want to link it entirely to like productivity because I think that can be really damaging but it's it's finding that balance and I don't think I'm in a problematic point of checking websites and looking for things to want to buy even though I'm on my no buy. Again just like with the amount of money that I spent in July out of my budget with the amount of shopping that I did in August even though I'm saying it felt like an expensive month like it felt expensive looking at my bank account it didn't feel like I bought loads of stuff you know again just I sort of just accepted that this stuff was coming into my life again and I was making decisions about what to buy and I just between you know it just all has very naturally started to come back and I don't know if that's lockdown related I don't know if that's just seasonally related I don't know if it's because I kind of turned the tap on when I was on holiday and now I'm struggling to turn it off I don't really know I'm not worried about it at this point it's not a problematic level but it's just acknowledging that it's definitely suddenly more of a part of my routine than it has been for the last eight months
that's where we're at. Sorry if I'm ram I was trying to be really quick because I'm kind of losing light so uh, sorry if that turned a bit rambly at the end but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very very much for watching and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!